Well, good afternoon. It's uh, 2.32 on uh, Wednesday, the 13th of March, 2019. It's supposed to be uh, differential equations class. Right now, I'm the only one in the room. Hopefully, some other students will be coming in. So I'll hold off on announcements until some bodies get here. Uh, so I'll just go on and get started on the uh, presentation where we left off last time. We finished 2.5 right at the end of the class last time, and I think I made assignments there. And 2.6 is the last section in this uh, chapter, and we'll be doing that today. Uh, and then I'll, I think one person took this test last time to get started on it. Uh, the others, I don't know, I don't think any of the rest of you took yours, but I have your test ready for chapter two, which means I need test one in pretty soon because I need some sort of grade for you in case they do ask for samples for, uh, uh, what do you call it, midterm progress report. Okay, so hopefully some people will be getting here uh, and turning some things in. So 2.6 is a numerical method. Okay, this has been talking about uh, first degree differential equations um, and different methods of doing. In reality, very seldom will you be able to solve a differential equation analytically the way we've been doing. If it is set up so you can, by all means do it, okay? But quite often they're non-solvable, okay, or very difficult to solve uh, analytically, so people tend to use numerical methods. Now, they're going to show you one just for the purpose of showing you how it works. This isn't the best one. It's called Euler's method. It was an early one, obviously named after Euler, who was very early in the game here. Uh, there's a couple of better ones. Uh, they will talk about those toward the end of the section. Uh, and then there's other ways to do it, and uh, we'll just uh, let it. But this is at least going to give you an introduction into uh, what goes on in the real world. Differential equation can be a source of information. We started the chapter by observing we could garner qualitative information from the first order differential equation about its solutions even before we attempted to solve the equation. Then in 2.2 to 2.5, we examine first order differential equations analytically and develop some procedures for obtaining explicit or implicit solutions. Okay? But a differential equation can possess a solution, and yet it may not be possible to attain it at analytically. That's what I was just saying. So to round out the picture, we're going to show you how to do it numerically. Now, this is just one method. This section we're going to develop only the simplest of the numerical methods, method that utilizes the idea of tangent lines uh, that can be used to approximate the values of function in a small neighborhood of a point of tangency. Uh, more extensive treatment numerical methods is given in Chapter 9. We probably won't get there in this course, not at the rate we're going anyway. So, let's see what we're talking about. Let's assume that the first order Initial value problem is something like this. Let me get my pen set up. Uh, okay. Y prime, which is also dy dx, okay, is equal to some function of x and y. Okay. Now that's Isolating the y, the dy dx on one side, putting everything else on the other side as some function of x and y. Okay? Now, we also generally will know what the y value is at some x value. We'll call it x naught, and usually that's given to be y naught. In other words, one point of start. Okay? Now, the assumption here is that there is a solution to this. There you could come up with some things that there are just no solutions, you know. And we're going to assume there is a solution. 
So one way of approximating the solution is to use the tangent lines and it sort of goes back to something we were doing uh, way back when we were doing some of the mapping type thing. Uh, so let's get an example here. Uh, y prime. Okay. I think I'll erase this because I may need the room. Okay. Don't look very much like that, but let me put some real life things in. Y prime, which is the y dx, is equal to 0 0.1 times the square root of y plus 0 0.4 times x squared. Okay, there's your differential equation. Here's the boundary condition. When y, when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. I don't know why a comma showed up there, but it doesn't belong. Okay. Okay. So there's your uh, differential equation. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, certainly not separable, certainly not linear. Uh, don't believe it may have a chance with the Bernoulli form, maybe, uh, but there's not much chance of many of the others. Certainly, I don't think will be anything that we can do as an exact solution. Uh, don't believe any of the others. Closest would come might be Bernoulli. Okay. Now, it's a nonlinear differential equation, certainly not linear. Uh, this IV, okay, now here's what they say. Uh, this initial value problem cannot be solved directly by any of the methods considered in this sections 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 5. Nevertheless, we can find an approximate numerical values for the unknown function y of x, y is a function of x. Specifically, we want to know y of 2.5. We know y of 2, we want to know what's happening on the way to 2.5, okay? Uh, the initial value problem has a solution as the flow of uh, the direction field of the differential equation suggests the solution curve must have the shape similar to the curve shown in the figure. Now, I'll do my best to, I, I'm just going to have to ask you to look at the book, because to draw this and to draw it well would be pretty tough, okay? Um, now, um, they show you a curve that seems to fit where the arrows are taking it for a good but it, we know it's exactly true at when x equal to y is equal to four and there you see it in the text you want to know what's happening at 2.5 i wish they would have expanded their graph a little bit here so at least you have an idea what it was doing at 2.5 okay but we'll have to live with what they got, okay? Um, the direction field was generated by the lineal elements passing through the points of a grid at the integer, integral coefficients, coordinates, I'm sorry, coordinates. As the solution curve passes through the initial point to four, the lineal element at this point is a tangent line to the slope <laughs> given by f of 2 of 4. So, the slope is your y prime. So, the y prime at the point 2, 4 would be 0 0.1 times the square root of 4, that's your y value, plus 0 0.4 times 2 squared, which is 4. Okay? So what would this be? This would be 0 0.2, 0.2 times, 0.1 times 2, plus 0.4 times 4, which is 1.6. So that's going to be 1.8. That's going to be the slope of the tangent line at 
that initial point that you know, 2, 4, that's the slope of the tangent line right there. Okay? Um, now, if you look at the little zoom in that they have here, you can see that the slope of the tangent line is very close to the slope of the curve. I mean, it's very close, almost right on the curve. The slope is uh, 1.8. But that's a linear slope. The curve is curving, not linear. Okay? Uh, so using that point, the slope of 1.8, the point slope form of a line, we find an equation for the line that is y is equal to L of x. Now, this is not your answer, but it's a, an approximation. L of x. That's a linear approximation to what the function is doing here. Okay? Well, that would be 1.8 times x. Okay? The slope is 1.8. Point slope formula uh, would be uh, plus 0 0.4. Now, how do we get that value, okay? Um, all right. Okay. You have to sort of back off just a little bit, and they say using the point-slope form of a line, which basically is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, okay? Now, our y1 is, is 4, so it's y minus 4 is equal to 1.8 times x minus 2, all right? Because that's the x value. So this is y minus 1 is equal to, uh, y minus 4, is equal to 1.8x minus 3.6. Yeah. Okay. Then add 4 to both sides. And that gives you y is equal to 1.8x plus 0 0.4. So that's how they got that. They sort of just weasel worded it around, but didn't show you exactly how they got it. That's how they got it. Okay. Now, that last equation is called the linearization of y at y of x at the point x equal 2. Now, if y1 equal l of x1 denotes the y-coordinates on a tangent line, and x of y1 is the y-coordinate of a solution curve corresponding to the x-coordinate x1 that is close to x equal 2, then y of x1 is approximately y1. So, remember what our goal was? We know that this is true. We want to know what y of 2.5 is. That's the unknown, okay? We can't solve this differential equation, but we're going to approximate it. So what we're going to do is use this formula here and estimate what it would be at, say, 2.1. So we're going to call that y1 is equal to 1.8 times 2.1 plus 0 0.4. Okay? So this will be y1 is equal to... Now, I don't have a calculator in here with me, and I wish I had brought one. I thought at least one student would be here. Um, so here's what I'm going to do, uh, just temporarily. Let's see. I want to save what I've got, but I'm going to have a hard time doing it.
maybe I'll just go back and reproduce it. Okay. So let me escape. I want to keep that ink annotation, but I'm afraid if I keep it, it's going to store it, and then I won't be able to just do so. To keep from that from happening, we're just going to discharge it, and we'll come back and, and pick up that formula. Okay, let me get my calculator out. Okay. Now we'll go back to current slide. Then it's covering the calculator. So this isn't good. So I think what I'm going to have to do, since no one's in the room, I'm going to have to go on down to my office and bring out a calculator. I'll get my phone. Okay. So I'm going to close this out. Sorry about this. I'm going to have to pause while I go get that. All right. I'm back with phone in hand. So let's go back to current slide. I have to recreate the equation we just had. Um, I've got to get my pen set back up. <coughs> Sorry. So our linearization, at least at the first, is 1.8x plus 0 0.4. All right. And now we're going to do this L of 2.1. We base this on the point. 2, 4. So at 2.1, this will be 1.8 times 2.1 plus 0 0.4. Okay? So let me get my calculator computer telephone turned on here. And let's get to this. And that's 1.8 times 2.1 plus 0.4, I got 4.18. Okay, not too far off from where it was before at, point, at 4. Okay, so this is going to be our new y1. And this was our x1, okay, for our next approximation. Okay, now, Now, what I thought they were going to do was give, come up with a new approximation, but they're not. They're going to use the same one. So, no, you know, we, that's exactly what we did. All right. Now, <clears throat> that's just one step. To generalize the procedure just illustrated, we use the linearization of the unknown solution, y of x, uh, at x equal x0, and this is what it becomes, L of x, just like we had before, is equal to y0 plus f of x0, y0, okay? times x minus x naught. Okay. All right. Glad to see somebody here. Glad to be here. And if you will turn on the light closest this way, and I'll turn on the switch. Okay. I was warning someone here earlier uh, because I had some calculations to make. I didn't bring a calculator with me, so I had to stop the recording, go down to my office, get my phone to bring it back. I just have gotten here and, and gotten started on it. So uh, I'll let you take over. you got a, either a phone or a calculator or something, right? I do. Okay. I'm going to turn mine off then. Uh, 
have to remember to take it with me when I go. All right. Now, we're on page 77. It's in chapter 2, first order uh, differential equations, and this is 2.6, a numerical method. We've done all the talking about it. We're getting down to actually what this method is. Okay. Now, what we're doing here is a linearization of a differential equation. Now, the differential equation is like this. Um, y prime is equal to f of x, y. Okay. <coughs> that, <coughs> sorry. I've had this either getting the coughing fits or sneezing fits all day long. I don't know why, but it's just been happening. Okay. There's your differential equation, and it's a most generic form. Of course, you know, we are used to seeing the differential equations with something multiplied and then added and, you know, this and stuff. What you do is get everything on the other side except the y prime. This is first order differential equation. You should be able to do that pretty much. Uh, I think one that you had on I think the uh, first test had a y prime squared. Well, that wasn't a linear differential, ordinary differential equation. It was a square of one. So it, that was a little bizarre. But even then, you can take a square root, you still have this. So, so you just get it out there, whatever it is. Now remember, the f of x, y is your slope, is your derivative. So here's what the thing is. You're approximating a value here, uh, a y value here, so it's y minus y1, y naught, we'll call it, is equal to slope times x minus x naught. That's your, just your point slope formula. Okay? The deal is, this is your y value that you're approximating with this linear approximation. There's the y you knew, the x and y you knew from the uh, initial value problem. Okay? That's the y from there, there's the x and y, and there's that. So this is how your function looks. That the, the linear approximation, if you think back, y minus y1, well this is y minus y naught, okay, is equal to slope, which is f, that's your slope, uh, at that point, times x minus x naught. So that's just a linear equation based on your point slope formula, where the slope is the derivative and your point is whatever your initial condition was. So that's where we're starting, okay? The graph of that linearization is a straight line tangent to the curve at that point, x0, y0, okay? So it's a decent approximation really close, unless, of course, the curve is bending very sharply. Then it gets to be less good of, a, of, of, a, uh, of an approximation. Okay. Now, here's where it gets a little fuzzier. Now, I wish I had a figure of this, but you got it in the book there in front of you. Okay. Now, <clears throat> People can't see this at home either. I'm just teaching it to you here. So if you got a book, open it up to page 77, bottom of the page. Okay? There's the curve. There's a tangent line to the curve. That's your L of X there. That This equation is describing that at the point X0, Y0. Okay? Now, what you're going to do here is we now let H be a positive increment of the x-axis, a little positive value beyond x0, as shown here, and they show a pretty significant one, okay? So your x1 is some x0, whatever your initial value was, plus some small increment, H, okay? Now, with that in there, okay, your next step, or your L of x1, okay, so your first step is going to be x1 is equal to x0 plus that h. h is some small value, okay? 
So there's your next increment, okay? Now, that's going to go in place of the x here. So when you do that, your L of x1, that's the next increment there, okay, is going to be your y0 that you still had from before, plus f of, and you still have an x0, y0, okay, times, and you put the x1 in instead, so this is x0 minus, no, x0 plus h, that's your x, x1, minus x0. Well, x zeros go out and you're left with just uh, y0 plus h times alpha of x0, y0. Okay, now that's how you're going to get started. No, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. They sure didn't do a good job of this. At the time I was saying, I thought, why don't they do x1, y1? And they did on the second one, but not on the first one. And I can't quite see, rationalize that. See here, they're doing x1, y1. But over there, they still up to x0, y0. Now, I don't know if that's a typo or what, okay? But... You get started with this, and then when you go to x1, this should also go to x1. So I think that's x1. And then you don't know what the y1 is yet uh, unless you plug, uh, if you don't even have to, oh yeah. Okay. If you plug in that value here, then this is going to give you a y1. So L1. L of x1 becomes your new y1. But you don't have it until you you plug that in there and that gives you your y1. Okay, then the next one is going to take that as your y1 and, and do the same thing. But the worrisome part of this is you're trying to calculate your y1 with a y1 and it should be an x1. So I, I'm now even more convinced those should be x0, y0 at the end. Okay? All right. I think it'll make more sense when we when we start when we do an example, and that's coming up. But let's see if there's any other verbiage here before they do. Um, okay. So I think. that y1 will be y0 plus f of x0, y0 times h. Yeah. And then your y1, now y2 will be, oh, okay, and then as soon as you do this, then x1 becomes x0 plus h. Okay. So then you'll plug in y1 here plus h times f of x1, y1. Okay. And you'll go, and that's how you will proceed. Okay. So, your iterative formula will come out to be this. y sub, they use n plus 1, is equal to y sub n, the previous one, plus h times f of x sub n, y sub n. Okay. And then you'll keep going like that. Okay? Now, your x sub n is going to be x sub 0 plus nh. Every step you do, you're adding another h to it. Uniform H's. Okay. Now, that procedure using successive tangent lines is called Euler's method, which 
Leonard Euler probably came up with many, many years ago. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to work. Consider this initial value problem. This is one we talked about earlier. Y prime is equal to 0 0.1, that's before you came in, the square root of y plus 0 0.4 times x squared. Okay, there's the differential equation. Your initial value, y of 2, is equal to 4. So we're trying to get to y of 2.5. They told you what it was at y of 2, that's 4, and we're trying to get what y of 2.5 is. Now we're going to do it two ways. First way, we'll use h equals 0 0.1. That'll be five steps. And then we'll do h equal 0 0.05. That will take 10 steps. Okay. All right, now our f of xy from our formula we just developed, that is this thing right here, 0 0.1 square root of y plus 0 0.4 x squared. Okay. I'll write down again, because they did too, y of n plus 1 is equal to y sub n plus f of n, x sub n, y sub n times h. Okay? Okay? Which would be, in our case, y sub n plus h times this thing, 0 0.1 times the square root of h, the square root of y sub n plus 0 0.4 times x sub n squared. Okay. going to start with h equal 0.1. So our y1 is going to be y0, which in our case is 4, plus 0 0.1 times... What's that? What's that? Y1 equal to 4. No, Y0 is equal to 4. We're going to start with Y1 here, so Y0, this will be one less than this one. This is a Y0, which is 4. X0 is 2. It's 4? Yeah, that's a 4. Sorry. <laughs> Making fun of my writing again. I understand. Yeah, you haven't seen mine. All right. Um, I have. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 4. Y of 2 is equal to 4. That's the original part. So you're replacing the y, the, yeah. That's y of x is equal to y, y of x1 is equal to, y of x0 is equal to y0. That's what that would say. So your initial y is 4, your initial x is 2. And then we're going to step up by 0.1 to try to get to 2.5. That's where each problem And that, yeah, we're going to, from? what's that? And that's where y1 is coming from? Yeah, this is y, y0. Okay. See, y1, we're going to calculate from that y0, 0 0.1, h is 0 0.1, uh, and then we're going to, that's the end there, is we're going to jump over to that 0 0.1 times, uh, and then we're going to plug in our 4, and then we're going to plug in our 2. Okay. We're going to start with the n's equals 0. Okay. So 0 0.1, now that's, that's the h, okay? 
also has a 0 0.1 in the problem. That's this one, okay? Two point ones here, okay? Times the square root of 4, that's your y0, plus 0 0.4 times 2 squared. Okay, that's give you your y1. Okay, and at the same time, your x1 is equal to x0 plus h, which is 2 plus 0 0.1. So this will be 2.1. You'll calculate your y1 and step up your x1. Okay. Now we are I already, no, I didn't. We came close, but didn't quite get this done. So this will be 4 plus uh, 0.1 times 0.1 is 0 0.01 times the square root of 4 is 2. So that would be 0 0.02. Let's slow down a moment here. Okay. I'm afraid we'll be going too fast. Okay, let me do it the way it's written here. Okay, I was going to do it this way because that's how I do it in my head, but I'm afraid that. Okay, square root of 4 is 2 times 0.1 is 0 0.2 plus uh, 2 squared is 4 times 0.4 is 1.6. Okay, so this will be 4 plus. 0 0.1 times 1.8. All right. I don't know why I've got a parenthesis there, but I have. Okay. Okay. So this becomes 4 plus 0.18, which is 4.18. That's your y1. Whereas your x1 is 2.1. Step it up a notch. Okay, I, I, did, uh, I would assume that we would just go ahead and take 4 plus 0 0.1 combined. Okay, okay. 4 plus, we multiply that product, yeah. and that becomes 0 0.18. 0 0.1 times 1.8 is 0.18. Okay, and then 4 plus 0 0.18 is 4.18. That's your new y1. That's your new x1. Okay. Now, your y2. That's equal to your y1, which is 4.18. Okay. I think that's where. <laughs> okay, I do need another parenthesis there. Okay. So then your y2, your second approximation, is going to be your y1, which is 4.18, plus 0 0.1, that's your step size, h, times 0 0.1, that was skip here original, mm -hmm. yeah, there, so that's where that was coming from, times the square root of not y, but y1 now, that's your 4.18 again, plus 0.4 times not x anymore, but x1, which is the 2.1 squared.
pull out the old calculator. Okay? Now, if you're very careful with your parentheses, it should work okay. Now, you've got X2 set up there. What's that? Then I put an X2. This is going to be a Y2. Your X2, we're going to add another 0.12. to it. That's only for the next step. So you're stepping the X up by 0.1 each time. We're on our way to get to 2.5. That's where we're going to stop. Okay. So I'll pull off my calculator too. And let's see if I can get the parentheses to work. here and I'm going to do another point one times now this on my phone I have to enter the number first 4.18 and then I'm going to do a square root of that okay plus yeah point four times 2.1 squared. Now I'm going to close that parentheses and press equal. And I get 4.3768 blah 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 blah. Did you get it or, or you're not? Bad, my battery don't get it. Oh, okay. I'm getting there. I'm 50%. So I'll make it for a little while. So my new Y, my Y2 is now, I'm going to write it over here. Y2 is equal to, yuck. Uh, let's see, how far do they take it? They do, goodness, where do they do? Oh, there it is. Okay. 4.3768, 4.3768, now why they decided to stop at 4, I'm not sure. I'm going to go out and do a 4.5 on the end. Where on earth do you see that? Okay, in your book, yeah. uh, the table 261, 2.6.1, oh. 2. okay. right. and they stopped at uh, 0.3768. I just put two more digits on because the next digit was a zero and that seemed like a good place to stop. Okay. Now, so my Y3 is going to be the Y2, which is 4.376845. Oh, my pen is really slow. I happened to glance somewhere else and I lost where I was writing. Four or five. I'll probably regret having that many digits in a minute, but for now I'm going to hang on to them. Plus 0 0.1 times, here's our parentheses again, another 0 0.1, that's from the equation itself, times the square root of 4.376845. My writing really stinks because my Ten is so slow. Plus 0 0.4 times 2.2 squared. All right. And my x3 is going to jump up in a minute to 2.3. Okay. You see the procedure here? So let's see what we get. I've got the Y1 here, that's good. I'm going to leave it on there. Plus 0.1 times open 
parentheses, point one times four point three seven six eight four five, four point three seven six eight four five, square root of that, plus point four times two point two squared close parentheses equals. I get a 4.5914, I think. What do they get? Same yeah. I was going to do, I'm, I may do a few more digits. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say my Y3 is equal to 4.5913. Six, just because the next digit after the five is a nine, and I round it up to six. That's about as close as I can get. Okay, and this is what you do. Okay, so you see what you do. You put in your y three, which I have on the screen right here, plus point one times point one, uh, open parentheses point one, square root of your your y, which is your last y, whatever that was, plus point four times whatever your next x is, and you keep going. So I don't want to do all these calculations if I can get away with it. We got up to x, y3, so then we'll do y4, and I'm going to take their word for it. That y4 would get you up to, this aggravates me no end, okay, uh, 4.8244. And then they do it one more time to Y5, and they get it to be 5.0768. Now, the trouble is, we can't do it analytically. We don't know how close we are. We don't know if we're there or not. Okay? Now, I'm going to erase some things here and leave others, but I'm going to leave my Y5 down there, okay? But I'm going to erase everything else. And do the H of 0.05. Oh. Yes, twice as many steps, okay? Okay. I'm probably going to erase more. Okay, at some point, well, the eraser is not working well. I'm going to leave my Y5, but I'm going to, I'm just going to wipe out all the rest of it. I'm trying to be selective, but I don't think I can do it. The eraser is really, really slow. The pen was getting really slow, now the eraser is even slower. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can retrieve what I can. Okay, now we're going to be doing the H of 0.05. So our Y1 is now going to be 4, which is our Y0, plus 0 0.05, that's our H. The 0 0.01 is from before. 4 is from, you know, your y0 plus 1. So all that is the same, okay? 
and this will be 2 plus 0 0.05, so that would be 2.05. Okay, so this would be 0 0.05 here. All that's the same. Whoa! I thought my eraser was on. Sorry. Okay. I think I'll start over there. Okay. Now let's see what we got. <clears throat> we know what these are. I calculated those to left them up there from before. So our new Y1 is going to be 4 plus point oh five times open parentheses one point eight okay got four point oh nine that time. Last time it was four point one eight wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's 4.09. Yeah, that's right. That's what we got. 4.09. Okay. I think I'm going to, because I'll need the room, let me go on and erase these two. Okay. All right. So the Y2 in this case is going to be the 4.09 plus, again, 0 0.05 times 0 0.1 times the square root of 4.09 plus 0 0.4 times your new X, which is 2.01. No, 0, 0.5, sorry. 0, 0.5 uh, squared. All right. So there is my new calculation. 4.09 I've got on here already. Plus 0 0.05 times, open parentheses, 0 0.1 times 4.09. square root plus 0.4 times 2.05 squared close parentheses I got 4.18 blah 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 I think they got it too 4.1842 I guess I'm going to have to leave it about like that. 4.1842. Okay. Now, that's my Y2. My X2 is now 2.1 because it's 2.05 plus another 0.05. All right. So, my Y3 is equal to that thing here, 4.1842. plus 0 0.05 times 0 0.1 times the square root of 4.1812. No, 42. Yeah. Plus 0 0.4 times 2.1 squared. Okay, so let's see what that is. What I'm going to do is leave that whole digit I have in there and just add to that plus 0 0.05 times, open parentheses, 0 0.1 times Square root of, or I have to enter the number first, 
four two, I believe it was that one. Yep. Eight, yeah, it's four, four two. two. Square root plus point four times two point one squared. Close parentheses equals four point two eight two six. Is that what we got? Yep. Okay, so I'll carry it a little bit further. 4.28259. And then the x2 will be, uh, x3, sorry, that's your y3, the x3 will be 2.15. Okay. Now, you got the procedure of this down? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to, you enter that and you get up to their Y5 is only halfway there, okay? <coughs> uh, that would only get you to 2.25 uh, and it's nowhere close to this Y5 because that's actually at 2.5. Their Y5 on this one would be 2.25. So we go all the way up to uh, 2. Let's see. I'm going to take off their 5. That's their final answer. <coughs> what we got on this way, this now is our Y10, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken which is our final answer when we finally gotten up to 2.5 this is approximately 5.0997 okay now I can't tell I mean I know in my heart of hearts that one must be the better estimate but since we have no real value to measure it yet, we really don't even know that. Except that this is taking smaller increments, so you should be able to stay closer to the truth. But you got to the same point, it just took you twice as long. Now, one thing to note here, doing on a calculator is somewhat thing. You can program this in a computer and do it like that, you know. And that's exactly what you tend to do, okay? You just call up this function every time and your inputs will be your new x2 and your new y2 and the, they are the previous one what you got is your, your answer before your y the y to them so that's why our iterative process works really well for if you can program it in okay doing this by hand <laughs> yeah. okay problems with that so i'm going to go on and clear this and get out of this down. Okay. Get one more just to get out of there. Okay. That is the Euler method. Okay. And what, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of the class. What is the uh, purpose of uh, using this Euler method? Because most differential equations you're not going to be able to solve analytically. So you need to be able to set it up. Okay. For linear ones, which you can usually isolate the y prime, dy dx, get everything on the other side, that's your function, then you use this method at whatever increment you want to go to estimate something fairly close. If you use too big an increment, it's going to get it way off really fast. If you go too far, no matter how many increments you do, you're going to be pretty far off. Because what you're doing is a linear approximation to a curve that's curving faster than linear approximation is adjusting for it. So you, you get off, okay? But if it's not too far, then, yeah, you can live with it, okay? Um, all right. And they say intuitively we would expect the second one to be much better than the first. So we have no basis for saying that, except it just feels like it would be. And indeed it should be. 
Now, the next example, we apply Euler's method to a differential equation for which we have already found the solution, so this one we can actually compare it. Yay. <laughs> okay. So let's go to a clean page and start example two. All day, that's, well, uh, this period that's been doing that a lot, and when there was nobody in here, actually, my previous class too, I started with nobody here. And it would do that, and I thought someone was at the door. So it, I felt like my dog, you know, when, when someone, when she hears something, someone's here, someone's here, you know. Uh, and it was always the win. So until one person showed up in the other class, then a second one showed up with like 10 minutes to go. <laughs> and then the, uh, this class started to sort of the same way, but you came in much sooner. Okay. So let's do example two. Consider the initial value problem, and this is one we have done analytically. We can do it analytically. Y prime is equal to 0 0.2 xy. Okay. That, that problem, that differential is the exact same one that we started out with chapter one. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. Right. Okay. And then we didn't know how to solve it. They just gave us some things. Uh, so... Th I think he really loves this one. Here's his initial condition that y of 1, when x equal 1, y is equal to 1. Okay. Uh, it says use Euler's method to obtain an approximation of y of 1.5 using first h of 0.1 and then h of 0 0.05. So we're going to try to go to y of 1.5 and we're going to use h 0 0.1 and then h of 0 0.05 okay and all the way we're going to compare it to what we know the answer is okay because this one is solvable by uh, separation of variables right you do the dy dx is equal to 0.2 xy uh, divide both sides by y and divide and multiply both sides by dx or equivalent to that, write it in differential form, and you have log y is equal to 0.1 x squared. No, yeah, I believe that's right. Whatever, and anyway, you have an analytic solution, so you can plug in and see exactly what the answer is. Uh, so let's do the uh, Euler's method and see how close we get to that answer. Let's go on and do, well, let's do it over here. dy dx is equal to 0 0.2 xy. Divide both sides by y and multiply by dx. You get dy over y is equal to 0 0.2 x dx. Okay? And you integrate this and integrate that. You get log y is equal to I'm going to move the integral here, okay, 0 0.2, yeah, times x squared over 2, and then we'll have a plus c somewhere out here too, so this will be a 0 0.1 x squared. So we have y is equal to e, uh, it's going to be some c, e to the 0 0.1 x squared. I think that's what our solution is going to be. Nope, x, minus, x squared minus 1. I left off that. Because of the plus c in there, I forgot that. You came up with log. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, when they plugged in their um, initial value, they came up with it. So. It doesn't have a plus C anymore. That's what you get. Okay. Okay, so you came up with the log of Y. And, yeah. Um, because, because you integrated dy over dy, dy over y, y, and by the root of the log Y. Okay. And then that would be 0.1 x squared. Uh, and you can do your plus C however you want to. Uh, but when you plug in y1 equal 1, uh, how did you get, how 
how did you get point one when you integrated uh, yeah. two? Okay. Yeah, it's a point two, but this becomes x squared over two. Integral of that is x squared over two. That's how yeah, I got that. Yeah. Okay. So the two, two will go up to point one. Two will go to point two point one times. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then the plus c, without doing all the mess there for plugging in the value, I'll take their word for it. Comes out x squared minus one. Okay. So we know the answer. So we'll compare ours to theirs. Except I'm not going to do that many of ours. Okay. So your y1 is going to be, we know what x1 and y1 is. y1 is going to be one, which is your y0, plus the increment, which is 0 0.1, times your function here, which is 0. Point, this is the derivative, which is the slope. 0 0.2 times 1 times 1, x times y, okay? Huh? No, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's all she wrote on this one. Okay. Yeah. So this will be 1 plus 0 0.1 times 0 0.2, which is 1 plus. 0 0.02, which is 1.02. Is that what their y1 was? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, um, our y2 is going to be that y1, 0, 1.02, plus 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 times your, oh, oh, I did. Okay, let me erase what I don't need over here. Okay, I'm going to try to leave that if I can. Okay. Point zero two times your x. Oh, and this is yeah. The reason I wrote that x one is equal to one point one. Go up by one increment. So one point one times your y one, which is one point zero two. Okay. And that's all we have to do. So this is going to be easier calculations anyway. Uh, One point zero two plus point one times point oh no not that point two times one point one times one point zero two equal I get one point zero four two four four. 1.04244. Is that what they got? No. Yeah. 1.0424. I just have an extra four on it. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. I was, I was looking at one above it. Yeah. Okay. Now, they're putting the actual values down next to it. I will at some point. Okay. That's your Y2. Your x2 is going to be 1.2. So your y3 is going to be 1.04244 plus 0 0.1 times 
0 0.2 times 1.2 times 1.04244. Okay. 1.04244 plus 0.1 times 0.2 times 1.2 times 1.04244 equal 1.0675 they say that's okay with me 1.067 I'm going to put 46 okay okay and your y3 or x3 is going to be 1.3 okay so then your y4 this one's a lot easier to do because it's all times and no parentheses and that kind of stuff it's going to be that plus 0.1 times 0.2 times 1.3 times 1.06746 equal 1.95 0, 9, 5, 2, 1, blah, 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 2, 2. Yeah. Okay. So this was 1.0952. That's where they stopped. I think I'll stop there too. Okay. Huh? Time is up. All right. Well, let's just wrap it up here at one your y sub five which was should be their answer is 1.1259 the actual value is 1.13 31 not an exact again it's round off your absolute error is usually your measured oh absolute error is the absolute value of the difference so in this case uh, 0 0.0073 0 0.0073 I don't, think, I don't think we've talked about how to get the absolute errors Yeah, well, it's just the difference of those the absolute value of the difference of those Either one of these would be the one, the one the other, take, the absolute value. take the variable and subtract the smallest one that 1.1331, where did that come from? That's the actual from, from that thing right there. Plug in 1.5 there for X. You should get that. I didn't do it, I just let them do it. It's on the tape. <coughs> and, and with each step, yeah. we're, we're taking X, X1, X2, whatever it yeah. is, and we're plugging it in here and then. And then we're, we're verifying the difference between the two. Right. If okay. yeah, if you did their table, yeah, each one of those x ones, x two, x three, they actually plug those in, and you see how the error is growing. Now your relative error is the absolute error divided by the real number. So you take this and divide it by that, and make it a decimal, uh, uh, a uh, percentage. That do percent your Percent relative error. I've got the hiccups. Still quite small. Okay. Now, not going to do it, but if you had done it, the 0.05, uh, by the time you got the 1.5, your, your answer is still 1.331, but then I'm going to say Y10, and this is H equals 0.5, that one came out 1.1295. So you see it was closer to 1.1331. Much closer. And the absolute error. They've got 1.1259. No, no, okay. I'm going to the next table. The 0.05 table. Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. And the 1.5 is 1.12. 
0.95. So you did get a little bit better. Your absolute error is about half what it was before, and your relative error is exactly half what it was before. Okay? We'll pick up from there and go. And their relative error and percent error, they tell you how to get that. Okay? Now, we'll start next time at the caveat. Okay? Uh, whoops. I didn't mean to do, well, I forget that. Okay. We'll start next time at the caveat. And we don't have much more to do. Okay? Um, you can start on the homework exercises, number one, number three. If those answers are in the back of the book, try to do those. Uh, there are not going to be many of these answers in the back of the book. The 5 through 10, it says use a numerical solver. I wish I had one, but I don't, and I can't give you one to use. But anyway, uh, don't sweat it too much. But uh, Okay. And you already got your test. I do. I'm working on it. Yes. Once again, I'm struggling, however. Okay. Uh, yeah, when I did it, you know, and ran it off this time, I looked at it and I said, boy, I thought these were going to be a lot simpler. They are simpler, but they're not that much simpler. I, okay. So let me close that in the, wait, hitting the